So I wanted to welcome you all to this uh, webinar at the Eden European Open, Open and Distance Learning Week 2020. <clears throat> My name is um, Ebba Osja Nilsson. I'm a professor in innovation and, and open online learning. And I'm also in the EDAN uh, EC, the Execute, Executive Committee. And I'm also sharing the uh, EDAN uh, Special Interest Group on the quality in technology-enabled learning. So this uh, webinar, besides it's, it's uh, due in the you, EODL week 2020. It's also on behalf of the special interest group of quality and open on quality and in Intel and innovation. So um, we have a webinar for one hour. And I would like to, if you like, uh, present yourself in the chat where you are coming from. And um, as usually uh, for the Zoom meetings, we have um, the chat where you can. Um, write things uh, or share links and we have also the Q&A function where you can raise questions. In case you would like to um, uh, post something on social media from this event, the hashtag is um, um, <coughs> hashtag EODLW2020. So you're most welcome to do so. We will have uh, one hour and uh, we will have for approximately 30 minutes of the um, presentation. And then we have uh, got, there's plenty of time for this discussion and uh, question and answers and, uh, and the di dialogue. Uh, the session is recorded and you can find uh, the recording at the EDEM webpage and um, you will also find it uh, afterwards uh, in the emails. So once again, I would like to welcome you all to this um, webinar. I am Ebbo Janilsson from Eden EC, and I'm based in Sweden. Uh, this webinar is on promoting digital education in the Commonwealth. And we are very happy to have Dr. Sanjaya Mishra here together with us today. He is an education specialist in the Commonwealth of Learning based in Canada. Uh, Dr. Sanjaya Mishra joined the Commonwealth of Learning as Education Specialist, e-learning at its headquarters in Canada on the 2nd January in 2015. Previously, he served the Commonwealth of Learning as Director of the Commonwealth Education Media Center for Asia, uh, it used to be called SEMCA, from 1st July 2012 to 31st of December 2014. Dr. Mishra is one of the leading scholars in open distance and online learning. So I'm very, very happy to have you here. It's a great pleasure. And prior to joining uh, Commonwealth of Learning, he was program specialist, ICT in education, science and culture at UNESCO in Paris. Dr. Mishra has over 25 years of experiences in design, development and management of open and distance learning programs with a blend of academic and professional qualification in library and information science, distance education, television production, and training and development. He has been promoting the use of education multimedia, e-learning, and the use of open education resources, OER, and open access to scientific information around the world. During his service in different uh, capacities at uh, the India Gandhi National Open University, Amongst the many innovative activi activities and programs, he developed the OER-based one-year postgraduate diploma in e-learning. So uh, Dr. Sanya Mishra is uh, very, very well known worldwide, and he contributes a lot to the field of open education. And um, right now, at this moment, uh, he is also uh, the Fall and Walls finalist 2020. It's very exciting and uh, he is, it is so well deserved. So I wish us a very uh, fruitful and interesting uh, conversation together with Dr. Sanjay Mishra. So now I give the floor to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eva. I will start immediately with sharing of my presentation to move forward. 
so you know it's a privilege and honor to be uh, speaking at an event organized by eden um eden is one of the leading distance and e-learning network around the world and um, its activities are always uh, you know, path breaking in a sense that it focuses on the real needs of its members and institutions. So thank you, Eden, uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak about the work that we do at the Commonwealth of Learning. And of course, uh, without um, the, the the invitation of uh, Dr. Iba, who is quite active in uh, in the field, especially in the distance education network and open educational resources, she is always probably scouting for, and of course she is one of my long um, no list uh, in uh, in uh, person for whom I know for a long time, um, and we are in the same network. So thank you, Eva, for this uh, opportunity to uh, be with uh, this um, uh, group of people. And thank you, everyone. Welcome you, uh, everyone. I join um, Eva in welcome you all to this presentation on European Online and Distance Learning Week. This is the best way of celebrating uh, what uh, contributions people in the field of open and distant learning are doing. Um, so um, I'm, I'm really happy and I would like to proceed with my presentation, uh, especially what are the kind of work that I have been doing at the Commonwealth of Learning. And out of that, I will focus only on one particular project, which is uh, digital education uh, in the Commonwealth. Um, many of you uh, may be knowing that Commonwealth of Learning was established in 1987 uh, by the Commonwealth Heads of Government. We are an intergovernmental organization based in Vancouver with one another office uh, in Delhi. Our main goal is to promote uh, open distance technology mediated education to improve access to quality education and training in the Commonwealth. But many of our, our activities and work uh, span across the globe and the kind of work that we do are uh, having strong uh, relevance and appropriateness for many other countries, including Europe. Particularly our work in the field of open educational resources has always been widely acknowledged along with uh, our work um, uh, in collaboration with the UNESCO um, and uh, um, ICDE and many other organizations uh, in this sphere. So without, without uh, much elaboration about our work, I would focus on um, the typical uh, example of digital education in the Commonwealth and that and the title of the presentation is promoting digital education in the Commonwealth. But I will be giving you a glimpse of this initiative that Commonwealth of Learning is doing and how it is having impact uh, across the globe and more specifically in the Commonwealth countries. So um, this is um, a this is the main page of the website that we have created. And uh, Dr. Eva uh, pointed out that this is uh, uh, um, has been a finalist in the uh, World Science Summit, uh, which is called Falling Walls, uh, which will be uh, educated uh, sometime this week. But uh, I am really happy and excited that we are one of the finalists uh, uh, for this um, this um, summit, um, which is uh, important because digital education is getting more and more prominence. And um, when we started this uh, activity, not much uh, many people were talking about digital education per se. So oh, what is digital education? We started this uh, initiative in 2015, but we were looking for something that we should be having digital skills training at a scale, um, 
now there was a huge recognition that digital skills are important for lifelong learning digital skills are important as for 21st century skills but the way to accelerate the pace of digital skills training was not enough because the scalability of teaching and learning uh, approaches through the face to face training um, was limited so we were looking for something that we can scale up the training to larger number of people and we thought that a web based platform to start with would be a, a good way and then we also looked at that while more and more students are are, are having you know more adequate ease of using digital tools teachers are not having that the same kind of uh, skills so we thought about focusing on both teachers and students in uh, offering um, the the skills training and then we thought that the, the what whatever activities we are doing should lead to lifelong learning um, and of course it will improve uh, student success um in a, in a in a long term uh, approach so c delta is a platform for digital education which provides a scalable platform for both students and teachers to be a continuous life lifelong le- learners we started the whole development in 2015 as an international collaboration of experts so it was not just something that we developed on our own but we banked on the expertise of uh, you know uh, people from both commonwealth and non commonwealth countries uh, initially the the conceptual framework was developed by colleagues from the university of cape town but they were also enriched from by the advice from people around the world so we had an international advisory group who which looked into content development review of the learning materials that were prepared um then once the learning materials were, were prepared we moved that into a technological platform that is cdelta.call.org this the, this platform is a secured a platform which provides a dashboard for the uh, the user uh where the user can take pre test post test and continuously do self learning earn badges uh, involved in social media to share the work done and of course get certification at different levels of you know, fluency so what is the whole contours of digital education that commonwealth digital education leadership training in action c delta in brief um so we conceptualized digital education leadership as a you know, holistic approach where digital literacy is the center digital education is built around digital literacy and digital leadership is the overall um um of framework of things that everything covered within digital education and digital literacy so the, basically we start with digital literacy is a social practice that digital literacy would enable people to undertake various activities of their life including education and training and lifelong learning so it's a social practice where people are involved engaged uh, in, and and therefore that becomes an integral part of their life but then we looked at digital literacy is not enough digital literacy is necessary but not sufficient to become a good digital education leader or digital education uh, person digital educated person in that sense so what do you mean by that we so we try to say that okay you can you may be efficient in using social media but you may not be knowing how to use social media for teaching and learning so that's where the key aspect comes in or you may be knowing to code something but how do you know to code those things for developmental purpose so just to give an example but our focus is largely on using digital tools for education and and training so digital literacy is not enough so you need to learn how to make use of digital tools for education and training 
and the third and and the most important thing is that everyone can become a, a digital education leader a digital education leader is one who has the competency of digital literacy and digital education skills but also able to influence others in his or her sphere of network so the digital education leader or is one who is not a, not only master of the skills but also is an influencer in the community uh, that he or she or uh, works or does things for the teachers it's in schools and education system for the students it could be in their their own network and beyond uh, in 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 the society so digital education leadership we believe that every anyone can become a digital education leader irrespective of the position it is not necessary that you just need to be a principal to or a head teacher to become a digital um, education leader so the, that's the whole framework on which it works but it has several components to it there are the, the structure is that leadership and digital education are in uh, the leadership is looked at four different dimensions which is enhancing access developing uh, capacity making informed decisions and cultivating innovation uh, whereas digital um education is looked at you now how do you mobilize resources uh, how to develop digital identities and footprints and of course how do you engage critically uh, within and with the networks so that you use the power of the network to your uh, um learning and success overall um and as 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 a lifelong learner so the the whole curriculum of um c delta is based on 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 these seven areas and and therefore there are seven modules uh, in the in the course um which uh, the students uh, take uh, uh, module 1 to 3 whereas the teachers take all the all the seven um the the idea is that the students workload is limited uh, because their focus need to be on uh their curricular subject and this is an additional uh learning materials uh, that they are uh, they are expected to do during um their their curricular learning whereas for the teachers we have focused on module uh, all the seven modules uh primarily because we want them to have a higher level of understanding of what is digital education and of course they are the one who will be influencing learners and uh the the community more so they they need to need to cover the whole contours of the learning materials of course these are all self learning and our experience shows that um the 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 engagement with all the uh, learning modules are not equivalent uh, for all the learners uh in the platform uh the we have different types of users um technically we consider everyone in the platform as a learner uh, but we look at the categories of learners in two uh, groups primarily as learners and teachers and practitioners based on which the the modules are allocated for learning on a, on a, on an on an automatic audit process your profile decides which content you are going to going to learn and of course because of the implementation process which is focused on on institutional implementation as well as uh implementation in a specific country uh we have group managers who actually uh look into how the learners in the platform in a particular group are are being engaged and these group managers provide a, many a times scaffolding to uh, both Uh, the 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 teachers uh, in the in the sist, uh, ecosystem and also the learner uh, in the ecosystem so they the group managers play a critical role in enhancing the the completion rate in 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 on the platform of course besides that we have the the super admin who has all all the controls uh, on on the platform um the there are uh, the modules uh, there are seven modules all these modules are 
accessible to anyone um, through the, the C Delta platform, uh, but that only happens when you complete the uh, the pretest. Depending on on the on the take on taking of the pretest, the and the, your profile, the modules gets opened, and then you can uh, you can learn through this interactive uh, modules. Um, through your own self-learning, self-paced way, there is no limit when you can start and when you can complete. When there is no cohort-based approach, it's an open uh, platform for anyone to join in and learn anytime. The whole idea is that to to have mastery learning. So there are a lot of uh, practice uh, within the learning modules that you can do again and again uh, until you think that you are very confident uh, to uh, take on the the post-test and improve your score on the platform. You can do a lot of experience sharing on the platform about things that you do as you engage through the learning materials or uh, you are engaged with different tools and cre uh, get engaged with different softwares. And from that, any any learning or any experience that you, you can share in, in the network. Uh, the whole sharing approach is to is to encourage creation of open educational resources and learning objects that can be utilized by other members. Uh, and you can use any uh, platform for that purpose and share the link uh, for uh, use by others. So trying to create a, a culture of, of sharing on the platform. So uh, what happens, uh, you know, th since this is a, a, an open platform, there is always a chance of uh, people getting registered and not completing the course. So we have tried to create uh, badges on when the learner completes one module going through all the activities of the module, the learner gets badges that are reflected on their um, uh, dashboard. And when they complete uh, a, the course, um, whether in the pretest uh, as a minimum gets 40% uh, uh, of the grades uh, scores, then they get a certificate. So the certificate is uh, are at three levels also to encourage uh, the motivation. So you get scores between 40 to 40, 59, you get a beginner's level uh, certificate. And then you are encouraged, oh, I got a beginner's level certificate. Let me read the learning materials uh, uh, more carefully again and again, and then do the post test again and improve my score to the intermediate level or or to the to the fluent level. So we keep on uh, building on, on learner motivation through badges and the, and the certification process. Of course, there is a, a support mechanism through email. Anybody writes email to us. Um, and and we 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 help provide technical help and support on on this particular uh, platform. The overall expected outcomes on the platform of uh, Commonwealth Digital Education Leadership uh, Training in Action can be categorized into three key components. That anyone who is uh, undergoing this. Uh, specialized training on digital education skills would develop um, a sense of digital identity and recognize his or her own digital footprints online. Uh, this is more about digital uh, safety and safety, privacy and data, et cetera, on the network. So it helps people to understand how the digital tools on the network works. And, and the second important part is the people develop appropriate skills to create and share digital artifacts. And these digital artifacts are not just photos uh, of uh, or selfies, but um, about uh, how these photos and selfies uh, or anything that you do uh, could support learning. So because this is a teaching, learning and digital education, the focus is on creating digital artifacts and sharing digital artifacts using uh, a, probably an open license. Uh, so so the, the whole effort is creating and sharing. And the third and most important is that help people to engage in personal learning networks and be leaders and lead by example. And how do you lead by example? By creating and sharing and helping each other. So you create a sphere of influence 
uh, for yourself, uh, not only on the platform, but creating on your own digital artifacts, your own platforms, own blogs, own uh, uh, social media presence. So when you are in a position to do all these things, you are a true uh, fluent digital education leader or digital education skill uh, skilled person that's the whole outcomes that we are we are working at um, how how does this the implementation work so far uh, we have been able to reach about 52 countries so far um, of which about 30 are uh, commonwealth countries interestingly um, 19 over 99 percent of the registrations come from 30 commonwealth countries meaning that only a limited number of people from the other 22 uh, non-commonwealth countries have registered uh, on the platform this is primarily because uh, we, we are focusing largely on a country implementation in the in the commonwealth countries but through the social media there are people who are interested about uh, exploring digital education uh, skills uh, on the platform from the non commonwealth countries and do join on on the platform so uh, the number of students and teachers if you see is that um, largely um, uh, the number of uh, registrations are from the students that's that's something good uh, uh, and uh, even though we would like to have more teachers as well but uh, going by the number of proportion of teachers and students in our schools and colleges i think it's important uh, the numbers are very 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 significant and useful um, at the same time, if you look at the gender balance, uh, I think it's quite satisfactory to look at 48% um, female and 51% male uh, uh, responses, even though we would like to be more 50-50, uh, you know, but I think it's a true representation of what is happening uh, currently on, on the platform and, of course, in, in, in the society in, in general. I know this is uh, something I would like to uh, um, uh, allude a little more. Uh, we have uh, about 43% uh, percent of uh, percent of people on the platform who have completed, um, and uh, and we have um, over 10,000 uh, learners on the on the platform. And that number is uh, quite substantial if we look at even, even the completion rate. We would like to make more, but if we compare to the normal massive open online course, the percentage of success and completion that happens in MOOCs are much lower to the completion rate that we are seeing on this platform, primarily because we are uh, self-paced and, and the learners uh, can do this course on their own whenever they want to do. Um, the the uh, MOOCs are most cohort-based cohort and have a starting and ending time and therefore are more restrictive for people to, to complete. Um, and we have overcome that, that barrier by creating uh, an online presence of anytime, anywhere uh, learning and leveraging on the power of the asynchronous learning capacity uh, of the platform. If you look at the 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 uh, the graph uh, on the on the right side, um, we are presenting a uh, the the learning improvement in the course for pre uh, test and post test um, for all the uh, people in the platform and uh, some ten identified countries. Um, if you look at the overall uh, the growth rate on uh, from pre test to post test um, have increased about 38%, you know, which is which is quite significant uh, in terms of understanding the impact uh, on the students or the learners achievement on the platform. But whereas if you look at um, the, the 10 targeted countries, which I'll come into details uh, immediately after this, we have about 30% increase on, on the um, pre-test and post-test scores. Both the, the numbers are quite significant and shows that there has been uh, a, a, a good impact of uh, the course on student achievement. Broadly, what it shows is that most of the learners who came to the platform had beginner's level of um, understanding of digital education 
um, skills, but when they uh, completed the post test, uh, they, those who completed the post test, their overall uh, increased uh, to an intermediate level to a large extent. Uh, and this is the, the summative picture of these things, but not just uh, going into details of how individual learners uh, improve or their, their learning um, or achievement in learning in the pre-test and post-test scores. Coming to the 10 targeted countries, these are some of the countries where call had direct intervention through partner institutions, whether it was government or civil society or educational institution. So what we found is that there is a consistent uh, increase in uh, the post-test score uh, in all these 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 ten countries, um, and this uh, ranged uh, the the post test score um, ranged from um, ab about uh, um, fifty two percent to about seventy six percent. Fifty two uh, in you know, in South Africa the post test score of fifty two. Uh, 0.52 and in Bangladesh the post test score is 76.45 so that's the kind of range uh, but overall if you look at the post test score consistently uh, increased in in these 10 countries um, one of the important thing that I want to highlight that this uh, the whole platform uh, can help us provide something called digital education skill score or index for the country for the country as such. If you take the number of students, um, currently we have taken the ten uh, countries where we have interventions uh, from through partner institutions. But overall, if the platform goes more scalable to large number of countries, the end we get a get a sampling mass of learners from a particular country, then we can easily create digital education skills index using the platform. If we use these 10 countries, if you see the, the digital education skills has uh, overall, um, including both pre-test and post-test scores, uh, the Bangladesh uh, comes number one out of, out of this. Um, followed by uh, Antigua and, uh, and Barbuda, um, uh, and, and then, of course, Uganda, India, and so on and so forth. So this is, an, uh, an, you know, uh, I would say that it's an outcome for us to see that uh, in, in future, probably uh, if we have uh, more learners on the platform, uh, we could probably use this to measure the digital education skills and help governments to strategize uh, uh, what kind of inputs they would like to put in uh, to make um, their country, their learners and teachers in their country move from one um, you know, uh, score to another score. We can also look at what kind of investment that would require uh, in, in, in making that kind of transition. So we have a robust platform which can guide governments and educational institutions in future. So apart from that impact, what, what really has uh, this, this platform has achieved? We actually concluded a, an evaluation of the C-Delta platform and it uh, highlighted some important aspects. Um, see, uh, when C Delta started, there was not much being talked about digital education skills. Uh, today, there are several institutions who are offering programs on digital education skills, but this is probably the only one which is available uh, as an open resource or open educational resource uh, as an open platform. We have reached, uh, in my own personal view, we have reached uh, a moderate success uh, on the platform, considering the number of people and number of uh, countries that we have reached, despite limited marketing efforts from our side. Uh, the, the completion rate uh, is something quite satisfactory. And this has happened because of the uh, in-country implementation model that we applied. The survey, the evaluation indicated that the simplicity of the platform uh, has led to the overall satisfaction of the learners. Uh, and 
the the impact of this platform has, um, has uh, is significant from uh, made to make transformation in the pedagogical practices of the uh, learners and teachers in that sense uh, and now there is a there is a significant example from sri lanka where the teachers have created a resource uh, 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 using storytelling about what they did and what impact it made to their learners. Students actually used uh, non-digital approaches uh, to uh, create their own sphere of influence uh, to, to educate others about the importance of digital education skills in the process. Uh, this is just a Sri Lankan example, but similar examples are also available in St. Lucia. South Africa, Antigua and Barbuda, um, Kenya, uh, and other places, uh, and of course in Bangladesh uh, too. So let me quickly uh, uh, recapitulate some of the strong points vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the, uh, the European uh, Union Digital Edu uh, Education Action Plan. Uh, I think this is something that is uh, coming up in Europe is very significant. Currently, it is focused on digital competency framework, but wants to plans to develop a new digital education uh, framework. Um, which oh, we already have a framework in uh, Commonwealth Digital Education Leadership Training in Action. Well, our framework is largely uh, digital competence plus. So we are looking at uh, digital identity, uh, digital content creation and sharing, personal learning networks, and how we are to lead in the community. Some of these things are already covered uh, in the digital competency framework, European digital competency framework. And of course, uh, the, the teaching and learning aspects would also come out in the whole process of DIF that is being planned, uh, planned currently. So I see a, uh, the similarity in the in the thought processes and the activities in, in the, this, these two initiatives. Um, what are the key uh, implications and way forward for us? Uh, we have seen that uh, access to internet is key. Wherever students and learners have access in the school or at home, uh, they have been able to use the platform quite successfully. Uh, digital or access or access to network has been a major challenge and particularly during the pandemic. So the enrollment from the schools and institutions have uh, been slow during the last few months. Uh, what we have seen that the, uh, the learners engagement on the platform are much more uh, than the teachers engagement on the platform. Even though the workload of the students are beyond the curricular load they all normally take which means that the students are getting more interested in, in, in on the platform. In order to mitigate the challenges, more and more governments need to uh, jump in to support. Wherever there were government support, we found that the implementation C Delta was more successful, uh, particularly in, in, in Sri Lanka, in, in Bangladesh, um, in St. Lucia, um, we had uh, in Antigua and Barbuda places where uh, there were uh, support letters issued from the government or directly involved through government. Things were much but uh, better implemented. Uh, the the C Delta web was better implemented. Um, we also found that the we have developed a scalable platform, but uh, reaching out uh, to the people who need it's more important. So probably uh, we need to have do more marketing to reach out to also attract more people on the platform. Moving forward, we would also like to track and, and understand uh, how uh, the, the, the skills of digital education are having impact on student success in other areas, other fields, other subjects. Um, does the uh, skills of digital education have more um, supporting influence? Uh, 
direct or indirect on uh, competency building in other other areas. So we would like to definitely look into some of those things uh, in future. So with this, I would like to stop here and thank you and uh, look forward to your uh, questions and um, clarifications I, I would like to have. I would be happy to respond. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Mishra. It was fantastic your presentation and so interesting. And it's fantastic to also see the impact that the C-Delta has and has have, had to have. A great presentation. And I can just see from the chat also that uh, attendances are really appreciating what you're doing and the presentation you have just uh, done for us. Very many are, are pointing out about um, um, the batches and the, the modern approach uh, and the, from uh, and also about um, uh, the nice uh, uh, impact uh, and, the, and the high completion rate. It's uh, impressive. Uh, I was also happy to, to hear that um, you pointed out that everyone can be a digital leader. I think that is a very important message. Uh, I use myself to, when I have presentations, especially on leadership, I used to always uh, finalize with um, be the leader you want to have because everyone can be a leader and have to show up. Uh, there has indeed become a lot of uh, questions, uh, both in the chat and in um, also in the Q&A. Um, I would like to start with a question from, um, from the Eden president. Uh, Sandra Kusina Softik. Uh, she asked, she wrote, um, we often experience government support as, um, as a declarative, but with no real action. How to change this? I think this is, this is quite challenging, but uh, because we are um, a, in, an intergovernmental organization, our engagement with the government is quite substantive in the Commonwealth countries. And many a time we are able to reach out to the right person and um, request them to issue a letter of support at least to a local institution or a, a local NGO, uh, which actually goes back with that letter of support and goes to the schools and principals and uh, take our uh, this platform and uh, influence there. So uh, what happens that the the in this program the governments have not so far been involved in investing funding and therefore there is better support in countries like um, uh, Mauritius, um, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka. Um, they have been support letters issued, um, whereas um, in in countries like Saint Lucia and Antigua and Barbuda, the governments were directly involved because they see that this is something of uh, significant value. So I think uh, it's 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 a very challenging uh, issue, but it uh, to some extent for us it has been easier. But uh, I really agree that um, engagement with governments are very challenging. Um, and because they would, even if there is a policy, the f funding support from the government for a particular project uh, becomes uh, limited uh, because of competing issues and challenges. Uh, thank you. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a reflection from uh, Liebe van der Brande. Uh, she is um, first saying in one, one comment that um, the difference with the Digicom and, and the C Delta. That uh, seed advertised for countries, the DigitCom is for individuals. And then she say, um, I'm sure that the DigComp follow-up um, framework, like DigComp for educators as well as selfie for schools, uh, could give interesting inputs to have a maturity score for a region or a country. But in the EU, this yet doesn't exist. But of course, this would uh, require quite some research, and maybe these efforts would be taken across the world and not only on a European scale. And I also appreciated that you made some kind of, a comp not comparison, but you, you you showed what is going on in Europe for the moment, the, the action plan, which was launched uh, some weeks ago. Um, can you reflect on something yeah. about what Liv is uh, saying? Uh, yeah, I think I think I agree with uh, the comments. And uh, in fact, uh, um, 
Yeah, when I saw this uh, digital education action plan uh, 20, uh, 21, 27, I found, oh, that's really interesting. And this is something that we have been doing. And I looked at this and I really found the the uh, the, uh, the whole approach um, is, is building on a systematic process uh, to scale of digital education. Uh, that's the whole thing. But currently it is focusing on digital uh, competencies but it has an intention to build a digital education uh, framework, uh, which we already have. And we are looking at, um, who, from our perspective, the ex experience shows that we can actually develop a skills uh, index framework, digital education skills index framework. But it's true that it is early to look at. We need to do more research onto, onto it. Um, and of course, uh, anything that is, is done in an European Union scale um, always should, in my personal view, the kind of investment that comes in should lead to a global framework at some, some later point. And uh, there are experiences like C-Delta could be used to enrich the, the European experiences that are being being planned in the next six years. So I am actually looking forward to this kind of uh, kind of initiative um, that on digital education will get the more prominence in the future, not just digital literacy. Um, so we have a question. We have a lot of questions here in Q and A. Um, for example, we have. Um, um, People are asking about if the seven modules are downloadable and if they are free or um, about the badges. Yeah, uh, the, the, the modules are freely available on uh, Oasis, on our uh, institutional repository. And um, you, know, you can download this. Uh, they are all CCBY essay materials. Um, the platform is also free to, for anyone to register. And if you are registering on the platform, you go to an interactive learning environment where you do pre-test and post-test, earn badges, and download the certificates. Uh, but uh, if you don't want to do that, you can go to the uh, repository and download the PDF file and learn on your own. Um, but you won't get the interactivity uh, of the platform that uh, you want to do. So you can make use of the resources. Interestingly, um, uh, this, these course materials that we have developed have, are being used extensively in other um, uh, institutions and resource uh, uh, countries. I would cite one uh, uh, one future uh, learn MOOC has included C Delta as as a resource uh, within uh, the course. So it's being already being used uh, by many uh, institution in their in their courses. Uh, here is a question again from Liv van der Bande. Uh, does the Commonwealth um, have projects whereby they connect teachers across countries to an open platform? Oh, we are um, engaged in different uh, community of practice as such. Um, we don't have one platform for all the countries, but uh, we have different community of practice for specific projects. Like, for example, uh, uh, of course, this platform is a community of practice in itself, where people are sharing their own understanding on digital education and what they are doing. But other than that, there are other platforms like I have a, a, a technology learning community of practice, where currently we have about 12 countries, uh, 12 institutions from uh, 10 countries. So uh, there is there are different uh, platforms where we are connecting with institutions as well, but not specifically one uh, where everyone is there for one, all particular, all purposes. We have thematic communities of practice. Uh, thank you. Then we have um, actually two reflections from uh, Al Muhannad. Um, the first one is, how can we put the feeling in learning during online education? I want to feel in the feeling the teachers and materials. And also the, quest, the reflection about how did you make sure that when you make one platform of e-learning education, that each person get the same quality of education? Very, very challenging question. Uh, the, the whole purpose is um, you know, online learning is 
considered to be dehumanizing because you are learning on your own okay but as an uh, uh, educationist my approach has always been to promote blended approach to um, teaching and learning using online learning in the blended fashion so if you look at the c delta implementation our focus on these 10 uh, countries were largely blended so we work through teachers we train teachers on the platform and ask them okay you now are trained you know go to your school recruit students to be online and provide mentorship to the students and to also your other teachers to develop your digital education leadership skills okay so in a process that this platform tries to build those uh, blended learning opportunities um in 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 the whole process even though the platform is online we are probably trying to treat both path so for example if you are registering as an individual on the platform probably you don't get a mentor or don't do not get connected you might get connected little bit through the social um, uh, approach but uh, there is a limitation but when you are going to institutional implementation or a country implementation we have a more um, blended approach so uh, we are trying to take the both of the best of the both worlds possible but definitely uh, inculcating the emotional part on teaching and learning is a challenge but it's still possible to do uh, through different means including using online tools uh, to do do that uh, there are different ways of doing things uh, i don't think it's important uh, now to elaborate on some of those things but the, it is possible to do even uh, online there is a lot of uh, comments on uh, appreciations appreciations of uh, your presentation and your work you are doing Uh, really, and there is one attendance who attendancey who say that um, he or she has got the, to to the course and found it very very useful. Some of the modules. Uh, well, there is one uh, reflection or comment here from uh, Danaswar Harishandan from um, India. Uh, how to promote the digital literacy effectively among the rural population? Yes, uh, <laughs> thank you, Professor Harishandan. Um, I, I I think. the biggest challenge that we are finding today is uh, access to uh, internet okay people do have mobile phones but do not have the data and if they have the data the bandwidth is low so the important aspect is that while we keep promoting digital education skills digital literacy as an important part i think there is a lot of things need to be done at the ground level uh in in most countries in most um low and middle income countries is to upgrade the technological infrastructure to create the last mile of access of course there are tools like uh, calls aptus uh, which provides offline access to the online worlds through the local server and those kind of implementation still can be done for many of our uh, activities but it's important to recognize that digital uh, skills needs access to digital tools so if we want to empower learners i think we need to focus on on this and particularly the whole approach should be going mobile uh, and anything that we develop the approach should be more about mobile first approach and then what happens most more be more and more people these days are having mobile applications or mobile phones so then it helps us to um, to to reach more people in rural areas as well but uh, it's easier said than done has long way to go uh, in most countries so thank you so much uh, i think we have covered uh, most most of the the questions and reflections um of course the discussion can go on for for longer uh, but we have got a very 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 nice introduction and um, very deep uh, information about the c delta and uh, as i said earlier on i can see from the chat that people are really really um, appreciating uh, this webinar and uh, what you have shared together with us and that they have learned a lot and i'm sure that um, the conversation will continue in one or another way Uh, please if you like uh, share uh, your thoughts on social media and use the hashtag um, 
EODLW uh, 2020. And I'm also sure that um, uh, the conversation will continue in different ways, uh, not at least in social media, and maybe also directly to you, Sanjaya, and Commonwealth of Learning. And I'm sure that people will, um, who have attended uh, this webinar will uh, uh, follow up on Commonwealth of Learning, what you are doing, and uh, to follow you on also in social media, because it's really, really a lot of good things you are doing. And uh, that is also why you have been awarded the Fallen Walls uh, 2020. So we are really uh, uh, keeping the, thumb, the thumbs for you and um, keep the flag high. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> let me see, there were just so many comments right now. Um, so by that, I um, will together with all the participants, uh, thank you so much for being part of this uh, webinar for the Eden European uh, Online Distance Learning Week 2020. It has been great to have you here and uh, to, that you have shared your experiences and um, insights and um, the impact of uh, C Delta. and I'm sure we will follow it, many of us. Uh, so by that, I will close this uh, webinar for today. And thank you all for being here, for all your questions, all your thoughts in the, from the attendance. And I will also remind you that uh, we have a new um, day tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, at uh, 3 o'clock Central European time, uh, we have uh, the next session for the AODL We uh, 2020. Tomorrow, 3 o'clock CET. And the topic is that we are all in this together, rising to the rising to the challenges. And the, please follow the very interesting webinars during the week. It will continue even on Monday, the week after. So it is a prolonged uh, week this this year. So by that, I will um, thank you all very much for being here and for your contribution. And uh, most of all to you, Sanjay Jamil Bishra. And uh, I wish you all the best, uh, all of you take care and be safe and stay healthy and um, all the best to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eva. It's a pleasure.